So Samuel goes through the list of Jesse's sons, at least what he saw, and he had to ask, "Look, is there any more? Because God hasn't chosen any of these to be king." And Jesse said, "Well, there is one left, and he tends the sheep." And for some of you, you may say, "Well, wow, God really looks at those." Who are lowly and brings them up, he does absolutely. But could we consider the job of David for a moment? Because his job is so important. He's not just looking over one person; he's looking and tending over many sheep. And we had the testimony of David that said that a sheep was lost, and he went to go find his sheep, and met a bear as well as a lion. And how he had to slew both of them in order to save the sheep from the devourer's mouth. Now, if we're reading into this, we know that there's a devourer out there, and that's Satan seeking who he can devour. That's why he's called the devourer or the destroyer. But the whole idea is he's there to consume the children of light by means of darkness. And if we're not careful. We will be deceived. Simple as that. So we, as being children of light, we go out into the world in order to save those who need saving, and we give them a word that reassures them that they don't have to be afraid again of the darkness. So we could easily see how someone could be misconstrued about grace. And fear. Let me elaborate. When we have grace, grace covers a multitude of sins. Fear is something that God says someone who loves God shouldn't have. So when you love God, you have no fear, because in God's love, there is no fear. We tie the two into believing that we have no need to fear when we sin, because God has got our back, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Because when you know good and choose not to do good, then you're a sinner. But for those of you who didn't know any better yet you sinned, or you were known of your sins. Grace and mercy steps in in order to bring you to the light, gives you an opportunity that wasn't granted to you at the beginning of your life, and just because you may not know something for a season, doesn't excuse your sins. You still have to eventually come to the light. Your conscience is going to bear witness of what's right from what's wrong. What's good from what's evil. The spirit will even be revealed to you that you will know God's voice from another. Now, when Samuel saw David, he said, "This is him. Anoint him to be king." And that was it. Samuel went his way. Now, there's something very interesting that we're going to talk about in these next few verses. We're going to jump to 14. It says, "But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him." Wait a second. It says here that the spirit that was given to Saul was taken from him, yet he didn't die. Now, this is not the spirit that is given to a man in order for him to be alive. This is speaking about a guide. You knowing right from wrong, you knowing the right path that God wants you to lead. That spirit was taken away from Saul, and we see that that mattered later on as he grew older in age, because then he had to go to these soothsayers in order to see what came next to prepare himself. 